Welcome to the video on big circles. This is going to be fun because what we're going to do is utilize everything that you've learned about all different types of angles, arcs, triangles, and other geometric shapes in order to solve problems. I think about big circles like being a giant puzzle that we have to find all the pieces for and put together. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. They tell us that we are given circle O with no diameters. We could actually tell that from the picture because if we look at the picture, we can see the center of the circle at point O, and we see that none of the chords pass through that center. It says segment EA is tangent at point A. So in other words, that line segment just barely touches the circle at one point. Then it tells us that the ratio of the measure of arc AB to the measure of arc BC, to the measure of arc CD, to the measure of arc DA is equal to 3 to 3 to 4 to 5. So now I'm thinking, good, we get to use what we know about ratios in order to solve these problems also. Since we're not given the direct measures of any arcs or any angles, I'm going to start out by working with that ratio that they give us about the four given arcs. I'm going to put an X on each of those. And in my picture, I'm going to label arc AB with 3x. I'm going to label arc BC with 3x. Arc CD is represented by 4x. And lastly, arc DA represented by 5x. And in looking at the picture, I see that as a good thing because I see the entire circle represented by those four arcs that we used or got from the ratio. So in an entire circle, there are 360 degrees, so I know now that if we add all of these arcs together, their sum will total 360 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by writing in a little equation that sums all those together and sets that sum equal to 360 degrees. So that ends up totaling 15 of those x's. which makes the value of each x equal to 24. And at this point now, I can go find the degree measures of those arcs. Arc AD is going to be 5 times 24, or 120 degrees. Arc AB is going to be 3 times 24, or 72 degrees. Arc BC is also 3 times 24. And arc CD, is going to be 4 times 24, making that 96 degrees. At this point, I'm just going to grab my calculator and do a quick check. 120 plus 72 plus 72 plus 96 should sum up to 360. It does, and I'm convinced then that I found those arcs correctly. Now that I've found the arcs, now I can go ahead and find the degree measures of some of those angles. In looking at angle 1, angle 1 is an inscribed angle. It has its vertex on the circle. Its degree measure is going to be half of that of its intercepted arc. So if I extend the sides of angle 1 and look for its intercepted arc, I see that its intercepted arc is 96 degrees. I know the measure of angle 1 is going to be half that of 96 degrees. or 48 degrees. Once I know the measure of angle 1, I'm going to go fill that in in my diagram because that might help me find something else that I'm looking for in this question. So I'm going to erase all of the drawings that I did in order to find the measure of angle 1 just to tidy up and clean up my picture a little bit. But now I can label that angle with its measure, 48 degrees. Angle 2, if I go look and extend the sides of angle 2, I find that the arc that it intercepts measures 72 degrees. The vertex of angle 2 is on the circle. It's an inscribed angle. And its measure, therefore, will be half that of its intercepted arc, or half of 72 degrees, which is 36 degrees. And again, I'm going to undo all the drawing that I did in that picture so that it'll keep the picture neat and tidy when I move on to my next angle. This one too I'm going to label in the picture because that might help me find some of the other angles. In fact, I'm seeing this triangle in the picture 
And in that triangle, I know that the sum of the three angles has to total up to 180 degrees. I know two of the three angles. I can find the degree measure of angle 8 just by subtracting the sum of 36 and 48 from 180. So the measure of angle 8 now, I know to be 96 degrees. So I'm going to go label that 96 degrees. And again, I'm also going to label it in my diagram because that may help me in search of some of the other angles I'm trying to find. In fact, if I look at the picture, I see that 6 and 8 are vertical angles. They have to have congruent or the same measures. So I know now that angle 6 has a degree measure of 96 degrees. And again, I labeled that in that picture because it might help me find somebody else's measure. In fact, if I look at the picture, I see that angle 7 is supplementary to angle 6. So I know that angle 6 and 7 together must have a sum of 180. So if I subtract the 96 degrees from 180, I find that the measure of angle 7 has to be 84 degrees. So again, it's just one little piece of the puzzle after the next, and I'm making sure that I label all these in my diagram because what I found might be useful in finding somebody else. All right, at this point, I haven't found the degree measure of angle 3, so I guess I'm going to go look at angle 3. I notice that his vertex is on the circle. If I extend his sides, I know that his degree measure is going to be exactly half that of his intercepted arc. Well, his intercepted arc is going to be located in between the sides of those at that angle. So his intercepted arc is 120 degrees. So half of 120 makes the degree measure of angle 3 equal to 60 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and label that one in my picture also and go fill that in down at the bottom. All right, so I'm getting these done one at a time. Angle 4 is the next one. So let's go ahead and take a look at angle 4. Angle 4 has his vertex on the circle. His sides are chords, making him an inscribed angle. His degree measure is going to be half that of his intercepted arc. So his intercepted arc is going to be the arc in between the sides of the angle, or 72 degrees. Half of 72 gives me a degree measure for angle 4 of 36 degrees. So I'm going to label that in the picture. And I'm also going to label that down where I'm recording my answers. All right, angle 5 is a little tricky if we go and look at him. Angle 5 has his vertex on the circle, but he's formed by a secant and a chord. He's that special angle that doesn't follow the rules. However, if I look at angle 5 in the picture, I see that he's supplementary with angle 4. Together, they form a straight line, and that means they have to be supplementary. So if I subtract 36 degrees from 180, that'll give me the degree measure for angle 5. That's part of why I think these are so cool. They pull everything that we've utilized and done with geometry so far this year all into one problem. It's got supplementary angles. It's got triangles. In addition to what we're doing with circles, you saw ratio, all involved in the same question, all involved in the same problem. All right, so it looks like we have just three angles left, 9, 10, and 11. All right, so let's go take a look at angle 9. Angle 9 has his vertex on the circle. He's formed by a chord and a tangent. His degree measure is going to be half that of the arc that he intercepts. So if I look for his arc, and I think this is one that's a little tricky to find, his arc is going to be the whole arc that starts at A, passes through D, and ends up at point C. So half the measure of arc A, D, C. So arc A, D, C is 216 degrees if I combine the 120 and the 96. Angle 9's degree measure is going to be half that of the 216 or 108 degrees. So I'll go ahead and fill that in on the picture. And looking at angle 10, he's right next door to angle 9. 
together these guys have to make a complete 180 degrees. So subtract the 108 from 180 and you end up with 72 degrees for angle 10. So I just knocked a couple of those out, 108 degrees, 72 degrees. And if you were seeing the measure of angle 10 is half that of his intercepted arc, that would be a correct way to solve that question also. Either one of those will get you to the right answer. So if you were seeing angle 10 is half of arc AC, you're all good. All right, the last angle that we have to find here now is angle 11. Angle 11 has his vertex outside of the circle. The rule for an angle whose vertex is outside of the circle is that his degree measure is equal to half of the difference of the two intercepted arcs. So now I have to use my picture and I have to go looking for those intercepted arcs. So I'm going to go ahead and use my pen and extend the sides of that angle. The larger of the two intercepted arcs starts at A and ends at C. Its degree measure is 144. The smaller of the two intercepted arcs is going to begin at A and end at D. Its degree measure 120. So I'm going to take half of the difference between 144 and 120, or half of 24, which leaves me with 12 degrees for angle 11. You also could have looked at the triangle. That would have been an acceptable way to find that angle measure as well. So I'm looking at that blue triangle. I know those three angles together have to sum up to 180. That'll work also. So lots of different ways that you can solve some of these problems. You have to be able to find just one. All right, so there's the big circle. And again, I think about it like a puzzle. It's fun, it's interesting, and it's got a lot of little pieces to put together. Up at the top of the next page, I want you to go ahead and in your own words, summarize what you learned by solving that big circle problem together. And then see if you can apply what you've learned to solve the problems on that next page.